Caleb Presley is one of the funniest people on the planet, and his rise to fame has been incredible, from interviewing Drake to being on the Buster Show podcast. Check it out. What What do you think is, you know, the future for something like Barstool? Do you see it being like a Netflix? Like, what What do you, what do you want to see it be? I think that the coolest thing about Barstool, what's made it so good, so uh, relevant for such a long time, because you got to think about you know, something that's cutting edge or something that's uh, controversial or something that is kind of, or all of these things, it's it's very, I would say, I'm not saying it's easy, but those are the type of things that can cut through the fastest. You know, if something's edgy, then it will cut through the noise the fastest and get on your radar. And that, and that happens pretty often. Something new will come around. It's like, whoa, this is kind of out there, which is what Barstow was. But the thing that doesn't happen with those things, they don't have staying power most of the time right. you know it, it's something that once it's over it's hard to continue to build on that what dave has done that's so incredible who i keep saying dave dave is the founder of barstool for anyone who doesn't know the guy who eats pizza on instagram is how a lot of people know him. it's crazy what he's done is he's he's been able to keep it a relevant brand for so long i think it comes down to really one he does a really good job hiring people he brings in people who are really really talented and able to expand the brand just by them being themselves but they you know they're, they're hired by Barstool and he, he's very hands off. So for me, for example, like I'm I'm more than happy to give Dave all the credit and to to big him up because he's like a great boss. He's not in my hair, he gives me every opportunity. He, he always is open to new ideas. So we bring in people like that who are, who want to build up the brand. And then Dave himself, just call it what it is. I've said it before, I've told him to his face, like he just doesn't ever take his foot off the pedal. He never is complacent and it just, we talked earlier about how that's just how my mind works is in terms of like, I would never laugh during an interview. It's just really not how my mind works. Like he just, that's just how his mind works. Like I would right. love to say it's like, he's not some type of like uh, motivation, reads motivational quotes in the morning, and like fires himself up. Like he, just, <laughs> he literally just, he couldn't stop if he wanted to. Like he's the type of guy who's going to be doing probably media content and trying to be like relevant on social media well after he's, uh, retired or well after he needs needs the money or well after any point that's just how he is like some people are just built different and that's just how Dave is so he wakes up every day and he's like in the mix and like you couldn't take that from him he's already well past the point of uh like needing the he money does, like, he doesn't need a dollar he could walk away now and he'd be set and that's just not in his dna like even if something were happening with barstool if they kicked him out like you know what apple did steve jobs back in the day like they would build something else right away. It would be something else big. He doesn't need, doesn't need it, the same things that would motivate him are not probably the same things that motivate the average person. I would say that. And that's so credit to him. That's why Barstool has been able to, between the people he's hired and just the way he's is set up, he is, he's a controversial, not, he's not even controversial. He just says what he thinks and doesn't care. And so just those two qualities, I think have, have gave Barstool a lot of staying power and will, probably will continue to do so until they do kick him out or something like that. It's like an Apple situation, I don't know. If, if you could interview anybody from human history that's not around today, oh, are wow. there any names that stick out in terms of people who you'd love to have a sit down <laughs> conversation that. with? Dead guys? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. I could interview going, a dead going guy. Going all the way back, you can pick Egyptian. Wow. Who, who do you want to talk to? Wow. Number one dead guy to interview? That's a hilarious question. I'd like to see you with Abraham Lincoln. I feel like that would be a great interview. <laughs> You'll bolster your, uh, I mean, dude, Steve Jobs would be a good one because he's so, the one, you're going to get these guys with intense personalities. He would be, a, he would be great. Matters. I would interview any politician, any, uh, if I had an opportunity to interview Trump, I would do it in a heartbeat. Like to this day, it would be a fire interview. That one might be my number one dead person. Does he count as dead since he can't be on any social medias? <laughs> like, that would be that... a hilarious, so funny interview. I don't care who you are. But that's a good question. I don't know. I swore you were going to say Kim Jong-un. I would do him in a heartbeat. <laughs> that would I feel be like great. I can guarantee you, if I can murder you before, after, or during this interview, guaranteed, write it down like you won't have me assassinated, nothing. Did not do it in a heartbeat. I was just watching some of your Instagram interviews. There was one, I don't know what college you did it at, but it was with, it was a guy named Trevor or something like that. Uh, it was in December and you were- you Oh, were the guy from Texas, that he's a thought, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, you were interviewing him about his inner collegiate dynamic with his friends and how he always wanted to be around girls. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I could think was, you know, you're sitting there 
so close up to these people when you're interviewing them, asking them the most ridiculous things. How do you not crack up? Or are those just the out? I think it just, I just think it's how built. That's the number one question. Like if someone's gonna ask me a question, that's what they say. Like, how do you not laugh? I'm like, dude, it just doesn't occur to me to laugh. It's just how I'm built. Like just how my mind is. I don't know. I've been doing that like a little. Me and my cousins used to like run up on. Yeah, it was like we go like Myrtle Beach for the summer, and me and my cousins, like my age, we, like one of the things we would do is like they would have me run up to like, like you know like a, a group of people or like a random guy on the sidewalk, and then just kind of like just basically fuck with them. Uh, when I was a little kid, it's just something I've always I thought was fun. I've always liked to see how people react, like real reactions from people when they're put in weird spots is like the funniest humor to me. I like, like I watched Step Brothers last night, like that's one of the funniest movies of all time. Like, and I love that comedy too, but the funniest things to me are when people are really live, real reactions, and you get to see how people really are. It just crushes me, it has my whole life. You were to give younger kids, or even yourself younger, younger age, a piece of advice. What would you tell those people? The best moments in life that you have to realize when you have them and when to take advantage of them, maybe the best opportunities in life, I have found a lot of times, maybe not 100% of the time, a lot of times come in what I personally call stolen hour. What a stolen hour is to me is like, for example, you're going out with your friends or you're not going out with your friends. You're just gonna go grab a beer with your friends. It's a very basic example. And then all of a sudden you're going home and the whole thing's planned and then you feel good about it. And then you all of a sudden you're a couple beers in and then you're like, let's go over to one more bar. And then all of a sudden you have one more beer, two more beers. And all of a sudden you're operating inside of stolen hours where you had no idea that these hours were coming. And then now you had no expectations for them you had no idea that was even going to happen and then all of a sudden you found yourself just in absolute limbo living in the moment because you had no idea you could even plan for this